Woo! Hey everybody, it's Grady at Twin Creek Audio. Back in the studio today, I'm going to look at a little closer at the Soundtracks Topaz Project 8 recording console. So in this video, I'm going to go into all of the controls on the channel strips and in the master section and go into some more detail on the back panel and how things connect and a little bit of how they work with the functions on these switches and stuff on the front of the console. I've zoomed in to the very top of the channel strips. I'm going to use channel 10 as an example. At the very top, you've got this group of four switches. You've got a phase switch, a 48 volt phantom power switch, which is individually switchable on each channel instead of global or in banks of eight or four like on some other consoles. There's a flip switch that reverses the signal path of the main and the monitor channel and a bus switch, in this case bus two. So if I push this switch, then the output of channel two becomes the output of bus two from the subgroups. I'm gonna look at the EQ section now, also channel 10. And this is one of the best features of this board is it has really good EQ. So you've got a high frequency shelving EQ, and then you've got two mid frequencies. They're called mid frequency one and mid frequency two. And then you've got a low shelf, and it has an individual EQ switch to turn the EQ on and off. The mid frequency one is variable between 350 hertz and eight kilohertz. The mid frequencies two is variable from 50 hertz to one kilohertz. The low frequency band is at 80 hertz and the high frequency shelving is at 12 kilohertz. And below the EQ on the channels we have the auxiliary sends. There are six aux sends on this console. This is aux 1 which is dedicated to the channel. Aux 2 is dedicated to the monitor. Then you've got aux 3 and 4. Aux 3 and 4 can be switched to the monitor path by pressing the MON buttons and AUX3 can be shifted and changed to AUX5 by pressing that button. Same with AUX4, you can press this button and change that to AUX6. Zeroing in on the section of the main channels below the AUX ends are the monitor returns. The tape returns is another way to say that. You've got a level pot for each channel and you've got a pan pot for each channel. You've also got monitor solo and monitor mute. Below that you've got the channel pan controls and the channel solo and mute switches. Now I've got it set up where we can only really see the, the bottom. So we've got the channel pan control, the channel solo, channel mute, and here are the routing switches. This top one goes to the main left right mix. Then you've got one and two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and then your channel fader. So these routing switches, you know, left right, that's pretty obvious. You're sending this channel to the main left right mix, and you have a left right pan control right here. And the subgroups work like most consoles with subgroups like this one and two and if you want to go to just one you pan it to the odd side to the left and that sends this channel just to subgroup number one or if you pan it to the right it sends it to just subgroup number two press the three four button you can pan or you can send this channel to three by itself or to four if you pan the channel pan all the way to the right and so on and so forth We'll look at the master section closely now. You got your two big VU meters for your master left and right mix. You've got your LED meters for your eight subgroups and your left right mix there. The power supply indicators are there to the right. The auxiliary masters are right here. They also have AFL after fader listen so you can listen to the sum of your six auxiliary sends. Below that we've got the effects return section. You look at the effects returns, you've got four stereo effects returns with a balance control is how they're labeled. And each of those can be sent to the left-right mix 
or they can be sent to pairs of subgroups. Unusually, FX1 can only be routed to subgroup 1 and 2, FX2 can only be routed to subgroup 3 and 4, and so on and so forth. Over there to the right we've got the talkback section with an XLR input for the talkback mic, the level, and you've got the switches for where you want to send your talkback mic. You can send it to the studio outs, the groups, or AUGs 1 and 2. And you've got the control room section here, the master level control, the selection for what you want to hear in this section, main mix, monitor mix, the two track tape inputs, tape A or B. You've got your monitor speaker selection there, speaker A or B, and a mono switch. Moving to the left of that, the studio outputs, same thing there, you've got a level control and what source you want fed to the studio outputs, main mix, monitor mix, control room, or AUGS1 or AUGS2. The master solo level is right there. There is the monitor mix level and the merge switch to merge the monitor mix with the main mix to get that 48 channels on mix down. And you got the headphone jack, the actual talkback button itself, your master master faders, and the eight subgroup faders. Each of the subgroups has assigned switches and an AFL button. Here's a nice establishing shot of the back of the Soundtrack's Topaz Project 8 recording console. I'm going to zoom in to the different sections and show all of the inputs and outputs on this console and what they do. I did a little bit of this in the last video about this console during the overview. It's really important note on this console is that when you have the meter bridge, the power supply, which is down here, this power supply connection connects to the meter bridge. And then the pigtail connection from the meter bridge over here connects to the PSUN on the console. Now that's unless you have the studio system's Blue Dog power supply, and in that case, the original power supply still plugs into the meter bridge to power the meters or the lamps in this bridge, but the Blue Dog power supply would plug in to the PSU input. The Blue Dog power supply actually removes the internal regulator board inside this console and replaces it with an external and it just uses a jumper inside the console to remove that. So you would never want to connect the original power supply to this power supply input if you have a Blue Dog power supply for the Topaz. That is the reason that he doesn't offer those anymore, which is unfortunate. I didn't get one for this console before he stopped doing those. Just something to take note of and be careful course you can always have that internal regulator board on these replaced or repaired rather if it gives you any trouble I've not had any trouble with this one I was just looking into the blue dog at one time as an upgrade if you just need a generalized overview of the back of the console you can watch that video because this one I'm going to go into a little more detail about what some of these things do and what they mean I've zoomed into the channel patch section on the back of the soundtracks Topaz and I'm going to look at channel 6 in this example. Starting from the top we've got the XLR microphone input, then a line input, then the channel insert, then we have the monitor tape in which is tape return but this feeds the red knobs that I was showing on the front of the console that are labeled MON. Then you've got a tape out down here and it's labeled tape out instead of direct output because this channel 6, if you press the bus switch on this channel, then this becomes the output of bus number 6. 
And below here, these are where the optional VCA automation, that's where that would have been if this console had it. I zoomed into the master section, the patch on the back of the Soundtracks Topaz. Starting from the top left is our main right and left out. Then we've got the main inserts right below that. They even have nice little brackets drawn around showing that those go together. These are the group outputs. If you remember, you can also get a group output from the tape outs on the channel by pressing the bus switch on the channel, but you also have group outputs labeled G1 through G8. Then you've got group inserts, also labeled G1 through G8 insert. Back over here to the left, you've got the monitor mix output left and right. The studio left and right output to feed a headphone amp or monitors out in the studio. The auxiliary outputs one through six are here. Over here you've got two two track inputs A and B. You've got two sets of control room outputs here CRA, CRB. Then you've got four effects returns that are on stereo quarter inch TRS jacks and then a ground and power supply in. A lot of features and a lot of patching on this console. I mean it really basically has everything that you could probably you would probably need. So I hope that was informative getting to see this up close. My next project and I've already started on it is lifting this up off of the cart a little bit to get some airflow for the internal power supply so that I can do a demonstration video with this and record a song so you'll actually get to hear what this console sounds like recording drums, bass, guitar in an upcoming video. So appreciate you watching, hope you had an excellent day, night, evening, hour, minute, second, nanosecond, whatever it is you're having. Have a good one and don't forget to like and subscribe.